Alright then gang, so we know that Firebase acts as a complete backend to our websites, right? But how does this all work when it comes to Firebase authentication? Well, first of all, we control the backend services through our own Firebase console for each different project. And we're going to see that in action later on. Now, from the front end, we connect to the back end via the Firebase SDK. And what that allows us to do is then communicate with all of the Firebase services that we need from the front end. So the database, cloud functions, authentication, etc. Now we're focusing on authentication in this series, but we will also briefly use Firestore and cloud functions in this course as well. So how does this authentication flow actually work? Well, first of all, what we do is we have some kind of form on the front end, for example, a login form or a sign up form, and we capture users credentials using that form. Then they are sent securely to the server via a login method or a sign up method provided by the Firebase SDK. Then on the server, Firebase validates these credentials and then it sends back an authentication token to the browser. So then we can access data in the front end from this token, such as the name or the email of the user that's just logged in or signed up. Now, when requests are made to the Firebase server after login, for example, to the Firestore or to Cloud Functions or something else, then this token is sent along for the ride and these are the services. They have access to that information on them too. So when a request is made to change some kind of data in the Firestore, Firestore will be able to look at the auth token of that request and then protect data based on that user token. So for example, we could want to protect sensitive database data from any user who isn't an admin. And we can tell that from the token that comes along for the ride. Now also, once a user is logged into our application, then Firebase persists the user's state. So that means that refreshing the page won't mean that they're logged out, they'll still be logged in and that's really cool. So that's the basics of how Firebase Auth works from the theory point of view. Now let's start off by actually setting up a Firebase project and seeing our Firebase console. All right then gang, so the first thing that you wanna do is head over to firebase.google.com so that you can use all of these different goodies from Firebase. Now, if you don't already have a free account, you're gonna to need to sign up first. You should see some kind of sign up button over here. Then when you're logged in, you should see this go to console link right here. You wanna click on that. Now, this is gonna load up probably in your case, if you've never used this before, a blank page. You're not gonna see these different projects, but you will see this thing right here, add a project. That's what we're gonna do, we're creating a new Firebase project. So first of all, give this a name. I'm gonna say NN for NetNinja Game Guides with a Z. And then you can change your location if you want. I'm not gonna bother with that. Then accept these controller terms down here and create project. So. Once this is created, then it's going to give you a little button right here. And when you click on that button, it's going to direct you to your Firebase console for that project. So click on that button right now. And this is where we control our project that we just created from the back end. So all of the server side stuff that we need to control, we do it from here now. OK, so we can see all of these different features that we can use right here. We're going to concentrate on authentication. So let's go ahead and click on that. And the first thing we need to do is set up a sign-in method. So by default, when we create a new Firebase project, it's not set up to use authentication. But when we click on this, then it's going to give us a load of different options for logging users into our application. Now, we're going to focus on email and password authentication in this course. That's kind of the meat and gravy of authentication. But once you've mastered this, it is very easy to then use these different things as well. And maybe in the future, I will cover this at some point, but this course is all going to be about email and password. So let's enable that. Click enable and save. Awesome. OK, then. So now we've done that. If you go to users, it's going to list all of the different users right here. Now, if I wanted to, I could add a new user by typing in the email and password but ideally what we want to do is add that user from the front end. We want to sign up from some kind of website. So we'll do that later on. So the other service we're going to use from Firebase is the database. So click on that. And there's two different kinds of database that we can use right here. The older kind that Firebase had was called the real-time database. And that is still really good to use. But there is a newer version called the Firestore. And that is awesome as well. So that is the one that we are going to be using. 
So click on create database and make sure you start this in test mode. And what that basically means is that as a developer, when we're developing this website, we can easily interact with the database without having to worry about security rules, okay? If you start in locked mode, then we're gonna to have to be authenticated to start reading and writing data. We don't wanna do that. Later on in the course, we are gonna to return to these security rules to make sure that no one can just go in and read our data or edit our data, and we will secure the application. But for now, to make it easier for development, start in test mode and then enable. All right, so once it's created that database, it's gonna look something like this. It looks pretty blank for now, but you can see right here, we can add new collections. We're gonna have a collection called guides and maybe one for users as well. But again, we're gonna do that from the front end later on. So now we have our database set up. We also have authentication set up, email and password sign in. So I think in the next video, what we'll do is create the HTML template. And then we can start interacting with Firebase on the back end to use some of the different features.